Hello survivors, welcome to the jungle and to my green hell top tips and tricks guide. In green hell you'll be battling against the brutal and unforgiving wilderness where nearly everything is out to get you. Survival isn't easy, you're bound to get hurt, so this guide will walk you through the key aspects of ailments, injuries, health and healing so you can not only survive but thrive in this harsh environment. In Green Hell, you will face numerous injuries and ailments, each requiring attention to avoid death. The good news? The jungle is packed with natural resources that can treat your injuries. Knowing what to gather and how to craft life-saving items is key to survival. First, we're going to take a basic look at the various treatments and healing resources available. After that, we're going to look at ailments in Green Hell and, and how the treatments are applied. Bandages and dressings. The Molinera plant can be harvested with a tool such as an axe or a knife and used to craft up leaf bandages. Basic leaf bandages can be used to treat most injuries such as lacerations, rashes, scratches and abrasions but they are slower to heal than other dressings and have a higher chance of causing an infection. So next we're going to take a look at our leaf bandages, taking them to the next level with the various dressings that you can craft in Green Hell. Honey dressings can be crafted from a leaf bandage and one honeycomb. They have disinfectant, antihistamine and antiseptic properties and as such they're far superior to your standard leaf dressing. They can be used on most wounds without the risk of contracting an infection. A honeycomb can be obtained from a wild beehive or a wasp's nest which are found on dead trees. You can knock them down, but beware, bees and wasps are highly aggressive, so you will want to use probably a ranged attack. And may consider carrying a lit torch to keep the insects at bay. Wild wasps' nests also drop a queen bee, and that can be used by the player to craft player-made beehives, which can then be harvested for honeycomb every four hours. Tobacco plants can be cut down by most weapons or tools and they drop tobacco leaves and tobacco flowers. The leaves can be used to craft a tobacco dressing which contains anti-venom properties. You'll want to keep a couple of these in stock for venomous wounds caused by animals such as rattlesnakes, spiders, scorpions, stingrays and even the spiky tree. Plantain lilies can be cut down for one lily leaf and one lily flower. Lily dressings contain antihistamine and antitoxin properties, so you'll need to use the leaf to make these dressings. They're ideal for healing rashes. Ash is created as a byproduct of using the campfire or the mud furnace. Once the campfire or the furnace has run out, you can just collect your ash. Combining one ash and one leaf bandage, craft the ash dressing which reduces laceration wound healing time as well as preventing infection. Now the Goliath dressing requires you to find and kill the Goliath bird eating spider. That Then you need to burn it on a campfire, add it to the leaf bandage, craft up the Goliath dressing, which prevents infection. However, as both the Goliath dressing and the Ash dressing have the same effect, I'd strongly recommend defaulting to the Ash dressing as a much easier and less time consuming to obtain. So those are all the leaf dressings that are craftable in the game. Later in this tutorial we're going to marry those up, we're going to discuss in more detail the ailments and the best treatments for each ailment. Various foods will help you recover from some ailments. I'm not going to get into foods in a big, big way in this video, but there is a fantastic consumables matrix on Green Hell Wiki. I'm going to add a link to the description because you're going to find it really useful and helpful. Here's a very brief rundown of the useful edibles in Green Hell for treating ailments. Again, I'll match up the foods with the ailments more later in the video. But uh, the soursop plant can be found all over the jungle and it's useful for treating parasites. There's a small white and red mushroom or fungi that can be found growing on exposed roots inside the caves. This can be consumed as a cure. Red mushrooms possess antiparasitic properties and can be consumed or made into a soup. Blue mushrooms are found growing on the lower trunk and exposed roots of the Brazil nut tree. It gives players a small energy boost and can also be consumed as a cure. Let me see if I'm saying this right. Quasi Amara, the flower can be stewed to create an infusion. Water lilies, uh, once collected, they can be eaten raw or stewed as a cure. Bones can be brewed into an infusion. 
charcoal at a pinch, a lump of charcoal, which can be obtained from burning out a campfire or a mud furnace, can be eaten if nothing else is available to cure food poisoning. The albahaca herb is a medium height plant with green leaves that are reddish purple towards the stem. Harvest this one, use it as a cure. In addition to what we've already discussed in terms of ailments and craftables and treatments, there's a few other things that you're going to want to collect. So we've got maggots, which can be found on dead rotting carcasses. You can also harvest them from food that's gone off, so rotten food. Icky and squiggly, although they may look, they are important as a health item in green hell. They can be applied to infected wounds or returning the wound to a clean status. Ants or bullet ants are particularly nasty, aggressive little critters in green hell, but they have their uses for stitching. They can be collected from an anthill and stored in your inventory or storage chest. Slowly approach the anthill and press E to collect. Hold a lit torch will prevent um, ants from attacking the player. I think also armour will protect you as well, so do bear that in mind. Bones can also be harvested for bone needles. And you can also harvest larger fish for meat and fish bones. Bone needles and fish bones can be used as needles. And finally, the campfire. The campfire will be crucial to your survival. Not only does it help you generate ash, charcoal, things like that, it will allow you to cook up better food and provide you with a proximity sanity boost while lit. Okay, so that's all the treatments, guys. And there's no shortage of wounds and ailments in Green Hell. So it's time to marry them up to the treatments and resources that we've already looked at. First, let's take a look at how to find out what ailments our character is afflicted with. So you've got an inspection icon and when you have a wound or an ailment that needs inspection or rather an injury or something visible on your body you will see a magnifying glass symbol in the bottom left hand corner of your screen above your health and stamina stats. Body inspection is a mechanic allowing the player to self-diagnose and heal themselves. To inspect the player's limbs, press C to bring up the radial menu and press the body inspection magnifying glass icon. Open your backpack and select the correct or best treatment. Once the correct treatment has been picked from the backpack, a white circle will be displayed over the wound and you just click and drag. If you're wearing armour, you can hide the armour to allow you to inspect your limbs by clicking on the armour icon. Your armour will still be on your body, but it will just be hidden. Body inspection allows you to see infections, lacerations, leeches, rashes, scratches, abrasions, worms and venom wounds. Now let's look at the full array of ailments and their treatments. Most of the ailments and wounds in Green Hell will have multiple treatment options, but some are better than others. So we're going to start with scratches and abrasions, which are small flesh wounds that can often be obtained when battling natives or from a burn on the fire. Um, sometimes I believe you can just like fall off a rock and you can get them. You will see the inspect icon and you'll need to inspect your body to locate and treat these. Using a leaf bandage will stop the bleeding, but it is likely that the wound will still become infected and require further treatment. Honey or ash dressings are better as they have disinfected properties, so they'll prevent the infection and allow the wound to heal. Lacerations. Now lacerations are larger wounds and you're probably going to get these from like a jaguar or a puma or even occasionally a native. It causes the player to bleed, rapidly draining the health and if left untreated it will quickly become infected. Multiple lacerations could result in death especially if your health isn't tip top to begin with. As with scratches and abrasions similar principles apply but with an additional step. So using a leaf bandage will stop the bleeding but likely the the wound will still become infected. Honey or ash dressings will stop the bleeding and prevent infection and allow the wound to heal over time. But the quickest and most effective way to heal lacerations is using bullet ants to stitch the wound closed. But this will cost a bit of sanity, so do be aware of that. 
infections. Now, infections occur with untreated open wounds, treating wounds when dirty or not using sufficient treatment on a wound, like using a basic leaf bandage. Now, if that's all you've got, that's all you've got, and you're just going to have to go with the flow. But you always want to try and use the better stuff if you can. Wounds likely to become infected include lacerations, scratches, abrasions and worms. Infections will result in a fever. If left untreated, they could end in death. Now, to treat infections, you're going to want to inspect and locate, then place maggots on the wound. They'll eat the dead flesh, cleaning the wound at a cost of sanity. Then you're going to need to use a new dressing, again, ideally honey or ash, to heal while preventing further infection. Venom wounds. Now, these are caused by a bite or a sting from an animal or a plant. While inspecting, you'll see one or two puncture wounds with like a red swollen skin around them, and you'll often get a fever accompanying this wound, which will need to be treated separately. So if you only get dabbed like once by a rattlesnake, then you can just kind of fight it off, you can work through it, but large doses of venom, like if you're an idiot and you run from a snake to a spider, or you run into the snake twice, like I have done, um, large doses of venom can result in death because you're being drained quicker than um, than the tick is going down on the venom. However, yeah, smaller amounts can be fought off naturally over time. But there's a number of ways to speed up this treatment, this, this recovery process. So you can use painkillers, which can be found at various POIs around the world, such as the drug slab or the overturned jeep. You can use the plantain lily leaf. So the same lily that we use to craft the bandages can either be eaten raw or it can be brewed up with water on a fire to create like a broth or a tincture. Tobacco leaf can be brewed up on the fire and drunk. Lily or tobacco dressings. So lily dressings or tobacco dressings can be applied to the bite or sting. Leeches are small worm-like creatures that sucker themselves onto the player, slowly draining their blood. They aren't fatal, but they will reduce your sanity at one, minus one per leech. You will be notified to inspect your body when you've got leeches, and you can have more than one leech. So I've had like five on my arm. Make sure to check your whole body until the inspection icon has gone. So basically you look at your body, you'll see the leech, you click and drag over the, so you'll see like a little hand symbol. So then click and drag it off and it will just drop on the ground. Uh, no treatment needed after that. Just literally get them off your body, guys. Nobody needs a leech. Um, rashes, rashes are not fatal again, uh, but they will affect sanity. Ants, wasps and bees will cause rashes to players if you're not careful. This includes bees from player beehives. Rashes will heal over time, but to speed up the process, you can use a bandage with antihistamine properties such as a honey or a lily dressing. Just to reiterate guys, even player beehives, player built beehives will cause a risk of rashes. So do think about using a torch, a lit torch when approaching the beehive just to keep yourself protected and definitely wear that armour. Now, worms. Worms can be caught from sleeping on the ground and I tell you what, the animation is ugh. It's horrible. Uh, you can also catch them for sleeping on a bed that's too close to the ground. But just note that fires do reduce the risk of contracting worms. So always place your bed near a fire. Not like I've done in uh, Green Hell, but then I am in a hammock, so I'm not close to the ground, so I'm fine. As you wake up, you are going to get the inspection notification. You want to inspect your body. It's not unusual, just be aware, it's not unusual to have more than one worm on your body. So do be sure to check thoroughly. You want to remove the worm using either a bone needle or a fish bone, as we spoke about crafting them earlier, and then bandage yourself up, ideally using either the ash or the leaf dressing. Now, if the wound is left unbandaged, it will get infected. So your ideal dressing there is your ash dressing, but if you don't have an ash dressing, use a leaf dressing. Now, fever is a secondary issue. It's normally as a result of a venom wound or food poisoning or infection. Now, in Spirits of Amazonia game mode, you can also contract it by walking through poisoned water. 
Fever reduces player's sanity, it dehydrates the player rapidly, it will affect most likely energy levels, increasing the risk of you passing out. With fever there is therefore a very real risk of then it, it just spiralling because you pass out on the ground, resulting in worms when you wake up and it's just a, a real battle here to survive. So do be careful. You won't get an inspection icon when you have a fever. Instead, the fever icon will be displayed in the bottom left of the screen above the health meter. There will also be a number which indicates the severity of the fever. Sleeping can shorten fever time, but don't forget you're gonna get dehydrated, so you are gonna to want to wake up and have a drink and then go over and over and sleep and drink and sleep and drink. So if you can do one of the following to uh, reduce the fever, um, or cure it completely, then this is what you're going to want to do. You're going to want to drink a bone broth, um, which can be crafted up on the fire. I, I can't remember off the top of my head how many bones it takes, but I will put it up on the screen. Uh, Quasi Amara infusion made from the flowers of the plant, the flowers of this plant painkillers we've already spoken where we can find those for example um we've got the uh overturned jeep is my favorite and the drug slab because i, I do go to those it's quite a priority the red and white mushrooms which can be found in the caves they can be consumed as a cure for fever however it will have a dehydrating effect on the player do also be aware the red and white mushroom will be i think it lasts for five hours then it turns into dried mushroom if you eat it when it's dried the dehydration effect is much much more significant so just be aware of that food poisoning now food poisoning can be contracted by eating any spoiled food and also certain plants and bulbs poison dart frogs and poison water in the spirits of amazonia there's no inspection icon and recovery is gradual over time however you can speed the process up by eating or drinking bone brew um, eating raw water lilies so not plantain lilies water lilies or stewed water lilies uh, at a push you can eat a lump of charcoal now this will affect your sanity but it will it will cure the food poisoning or you can eat the leaves of the albahaca plant, but beware to only eat the leaves as the flowers will cause poisoning. Uh, so, so just be aware. Now, parasites. Parasites can be contracted by ingesting dirty water, eating with dirty hands or ingesting uncooked meat. Curing parasites is easily done by eating either red mushrooms or blue mushrooms or the guanabana fruit, either raw or in a brew. Note that the red mushrooms, by putting them in a soup, it gives you two, minus two parasites, but the raw mushrooms only give you minus one parasite. However, since you find multiple red mushrooms on any given log, uh, this shouldn't really necessarily be required to cure the uh, food poisoning. Insomnia. Insomnia is an ailment caused by lack of sleep as a result of eating too many energy foods and forcing your character to stay awake and not sleep for extended periods of time. These foods include monstera fruits and blue mushrooms but are not just limited to those. It's perfectly fine, it's perfectly acceptable to use those to get a bit more bang for your buck. Like if you're at the end of the day and your stamina is not great and you need to craft a shelter or a campfire um, or pop yourself down a bed, absolutely knock a few of those back, but don't keep doing it for days on end because you are going to come a cropper, insomnia is going to happen. The sleep icon will be displayed by the health meter and will show the level of insomnia, up to six levels. Insomnia will affect sanity, it reduces energy and can risk your character passing out. If you pass out, it's not going to cure the insomnia, you're not going to sleep it off that way and passing out on the ground will stand a high risk of you then getting worms which just again spirals and spirals and, and spirals. So 
and the only cure for insomnia is a good long sleep in bed. Four hours cure one level of insomnia, meaning if you've got a high level of insomnia, you are going to need multiple sleeps to become fully cured. Sanity. Now, sanity is a stat which you're going to have to regularly balance in green hell. It gradually decreases over time. Many ailments and wounds will affect sanity. So it's really important to know how to manage your sanity well, not to go mad and start losing the plot in the game because, my God, like when you go mad, you start seeing hallucinations, you start seeing natives, they, look, they, they start shooting arrows at you, which actually does cause you in, injury. It's, it's wrong, it's insane, it's a horrible mechanic that I think is fantastic, but you need to balance your sanity. Just beware, sanity reduction can be caused by worms, leeches, parasites, rashes, insomnia, maggots using maggots to treat an infection, using rainforest ants to treat a laceration. Certain foods can cause insanity. The poison dart frog can take you down from 100 to zero in one foul swoop. Uh, human meat, 45, minus 45, sanity. Spider, scorpion, centipedes, minus 10. Death of a co-op in multiplayer will affect your sanity. So just beware. So as you can see, sanity is crucial to your survival. To boost your sanity, use bed, stand near a lit fire. You get a proximity sanity boost when you're stood near to a lit fire. Uh, you get sanity boost in food such as cooked meats and meat soups, non-human meat soups. You don't want to be eating cooked human meat. Uh, heart of palm broth also, that helps with sanity. There are others, but uh, do check that food matrix out because it will have all the stats. It tells you how much protein, how much liquids, um, how much carbs, how much fats, how much sanity, whether it gives you food poisoning, whether, you know, all of that energy. Check it out. And that's really my rundown. That's all the ailments, all the treatments. Uh, if I've missed any, I don't think I have, but if I've missed any, do let me know. Now, the game has just hit its five year anniversary and it's released its final update. Um, it's completed. There's never been a better time to play Green Hell as it's beautiful and immersive and it's deadly. So here's some fast tips to help you survive and thrive. Wear armor. It can reduce injury, stop rashes happening. Basically, armor is your jungle buddy. Walk slowly walk don't run i know in my let's plays i run everywhere but seriously don't do me if you are new to the game walk and listen you'll hear a snake native or spider way before it can hurt you always be looking constantly scan your area see it before you step on it always be prepared Perfect Scout's motto, have weapons, a spear, a bow, plenty of arrows, water, fats, carbs and protein in your backpack, a couple of rocks, sticks and rope for emergency crafting, bandages, maggots, bone needles. Finally, boys and girls, don't take risks. And there's just enough time for me to say thank you very much for watching and I really hope you found this useful. If you have, don't forget to like and sub to support the video and please do drop a comment below, share tips and feedback. Till next time guys, keep surviving and enjoy the jungle.